Welcome back to Dr. Penn's A Well-Lived Life. We have a wonderful guest. She is kicking people in their asses and holding their hands to get them to propel into their destiny. Uh, so part of destiny is a part of a well-lived life. She's going to tell us a lot about her business. She's going to tell us how she got started, and she's going to inspire us today based upon her story and how she helps people. She is an author of children's books. She is uh, a Canadian, and she is changing lives, and that is what this connection about a well-lived life is about, it's parts of it. So our guest today is Tammy Johnston, and please tell us a little bit about yourself. So my business is KSA Business, and my clients are the ones that named me the hold your hand and kick your ass business coach, because it is absolutely perfect and appropriate for me, because I don't do the candy coating, I don't do the fluff or any of the bullshit, I'm very, very straight, practical, hands-on, get it done, does it work in the real world? And I've been doing that for over 20 years, running my business. I've been in financial services for coming up on 29 years. And damn, does that make me feel old? But it's true. <laughs> so, hey, here we are. <laughs> and so you got an epiphany to start this business. How, how did that all begin? How did you generate the idea of, I need to be helping people uh, I'm going to start this business. Well, I was always helping people, but I was an employee for almost 10 years and I'd been through a few different companies and learning things and expanding my skills and all of that. And it just, it was always irritating to me. And my last job, I hated it. <laughs> I was working for a horrible, creepy, incompetent old man. And I'd already was starting to look for other jobs. I had interviews. Another week, I would have been in another job and it would have been better for a little while. And then all the stuff that had been irritating me with all the other jobs that I'd had in the past would have come back. And I got called into my boss's office and he fired me. And it was one of the best things ever because if he hadn't fired me, like I said, I would have just gone to another job and it would have been years probably before I had the courage or enough irritation on my own to start my business. But when he's telling me that I'm being let go and, and going into whatever the hell he was talking about, I just started smiling and then started laughing actually, which is not the response he was expecting in any way, shape or form, because I just felt this great weight being lifted from my shoulders. And I'm going, I don't have to do this ever again. Like I'm done with all of the crap that goes along with it. And I said, I'm finally going to start my business because I've been thinking about it for quite a while. I had a lot of people in my industry pushing me to go do it and going, Tammy, like, you know, your stuff, you're really good. You would be amazing at doing this, but I'd always hold myself back. I'm going, I'm female, I'm blonde and I'm young. I don't, I don't see people wanting to talk to me about life insurance and retirement planning. They're looking for the, uh, the old gray haired man for that stuff. <clears throat> but I finally got to the point, like I said, when I got fired and I'm going, that's it, I'm doing it. And that's what launched me and learned an awful lot of stuff along the way. And I went into starting my business in a much better position than most people and stronger in the knowledge base because I'm a dork. I've been studying money, business, and success since I was seven years old. But there is still so much stuff that you can only learn when you're in the arena playing the game. It's kind of yes. like when I had my daughter. I've been, I've been babysitting for years and years. All all sorts of kids and situations and that. So I had a pretty good thing, but I remember being in the hospital after I had my daughter and I'm looking at her and going, oh shit, what do I do now? <laughs> right, right. Because it's different. So you said two things to me. The first question I want to mm -hmm. ask you is oftentimes when I hear people's stories, they have rehearsed a mythical story in their brain. 
you said, no one is going to listen to me because I'm young and I'm blonde. But the myth is that I'm not an old white man. Mm -hmm. How did you formulate that myth in your brain? Well, looking around my industry was a large part of it, and it still is. So in, in financial services, I don't know what the numbers are down in, in the States, but in Canada, the average age for someone in financial services, like our, selling RSPs and life insurance and all that, the average age is 57, which doesn't sound too old until you realize that the average age for every other industry is 39. Mm. When I go to industry functions, it's a sea of gray hair, white hair, and no hair. <laughs> And so you're older now. How old is your daughter? Pardon? How old is your daughter? My daughter is going to be 19 in March. Yay, March babies are awesome. Okay. Yes. So I've been I've been through an awful lot and I'm like I'm still one of the people that's bringing the average age of the industry down. So when I when I started my business, I was like 29 years old. So yeah. I was an absolute baby age-wise in the industry. And I'm glad I, I did it and have had a very major impact in the world. And I always specialized in working with self-employed small business owners because they need different amounts of help. And I ended up doing, I'd help them a lot with, with their businesses and helping them with, with their marketing and putting their systems together and all of this stuff because. Um, when people have a business that's not making any money, they don't have money to pay for insurance or health benefits or to invest. So it's kind of a greedy, motivated self-interest for me. So I'm going, I can help you be more successful in your business. So I started doing classes and a lot more one-on-one -on -one coaching. And then in 2019, I decided to split my business into two. So I still have my personal financial planning business where I do that. And then I have KSA, which I focus on doing the business coaching, consulting and teaching because with my personal financial planning business, I'm licensed in Alberta and BC. So I have to stick with those. Business is business is business. Yes. The eight foundational pieces are the same. It doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter what your product is, service, industry, anything. The foundational pieces are the same. If you and have the technical knowledge, we can build the business. What are those eight foundational pieces? Can you tell us today? Oh, of course, that's an easy one. So the eight foundational pieces, mindset, habits, marketing, financials, advisory team, systems, cash flow, and profit. You need to have all eight of them. The, if you're missing any of them, your chances of failure go way up. And the more of them you're missing, the chances of failure are almost a given. Because unfortunately, the failure rate for new businesses, franchises are different, but for new businesses, the failure rate within the first two years is over 90%. And it, it's not necessary. It's an absolute shame because it very, very rarely has anything to do with the product or service. Those are usually great. It has nothing to do with the owner not working hard enough. It's the fact that they're technicians, they're good at being a chiropractor, or they're good at being a plumber, or a massage therapist, or a coach, or they're a good cook. And then they go to start a business and they're going, I have no idea about all the things that I need to actually properly run my business. And I'm going, I can help you with that. We can teach you those things and help you put the systems in place and the support and the basic knowledge so that you can make it through those brutal two years and then continue to grow and expand. Our world needs more successful small businesses. Yes. We're the ones that are looking after our clients. We're the ones that are looking after our families, our customers, our communities. It's not the big multinational corporations. They don't give a flying fig about you. You are nothing but a number. So when these small businesses fail, we all lose and it's not necessary. So I want to ask you, uh, I, I want the next question I'd like to ask you is about, I, 
I do believe as well, small businesses really are the foundation of communities because it's mm -hmm. hand to hand shaking businesses, picking up the phone, calling, seeing how you're doing. And you don't get that with the corporation. It's the understanding a person's schedule. So for me, uh, when I'm when I'm looking at employees or I'm looking at contractors, I'm always like, what are your peak times? Because your peak times are important. If you're not going to be productive at this time, it doesn't make sense that you come and work in the office. That's just something that I look at because I'm thinking we have to be the most uh, we have to be the most specific about how we allot our resources. And time okay. is a resource that we don't give back. But what I wanted to ask you, because I really do believe in this, I believe that small businesses is what you do in your community, but you also should be giving back to your community by mm -hmm. volunteering and doing something mm -hmm. like that to, to help further shape the community. So mm -hmm. I ask you that, or I ask you that in, in a questionnaire that I gave you, but what caught my eye is made by mama. Please tell us what made by mama is. Oh, so made by mama is a wonderful small charity that was started by a woman with like the biggest heart in the world <clears throat> and what they do it, i'm not even exactly sure how it started she's been doing it for over 10 years and this is what she what she does and it basically supports moms and children that are going through difficult times so they've helped a lot of moms that are like for example going through cancer treatments so what they'll do is they'll provide fresh homemade meals for the family and different things like that. Um, <clears throat> they've helped single moms, people that are women that are getting out of um, domestic violence situations. Um, I have a good friend and client that they helped. Um, she's a single mom and she had twins. So that's an awful lot of work. So they would, they would provide some meals and stuff and help. They had some volunteers that would come in and, and help with some some babysitting so she could do uh, get some get some sleep. Uh, they get a lot of uh, requests, people that social services can't help or they can't fully help. So they they do they have a huge Christmas program. Uh, her kids, so she's she's got two sets of kids, one from her first marriage, which is a little bit older, and then the new, new set. And I think the kids are about 12, 13. But when the kids were like eight, they started a birthday charity because there's a lot of kids like homeless situations, low income and stuff. So they have, they host birthday parties for kids. If, if a mom needs like diapers or the pantry is empty and you can't get to the food bank or the food bank has been really, really stressed during COVID and things, they've looked after stuff like that. So I love helping them out. And I know a lot of the women so that what they'll do is they'll have different groups <clears throat> that will come in and they bring in all the groceries and they have a big commercial kitchen there and they will do a massive cook for the day and it's a great social activity and stuff, but they're providing these meals for the different families in the different situations. Like it's, it's amazing. It's one of my absolute favorite charities. So leaders read and... Mm -hmm. You are a leader. You are a strong, vivacious, fiery woman. <laughs> Tell me what books you would recommend. Okay, that's that's kind of a difficult question because I always go, what do you, I usually start talking to people and kind of figure out what they need the help with mm -hmm. because there's so many <clears throat> amazing books and depending on what you need help with, there's different things that I would recommend. But if you're saying, okay, one book, so um, what I refer to as the life Bible is the success principles by Jack Canfield and Janet Switzer. And the reason why I call it that is because it's basically the Coles notes version of everything that I've been learning, reading, studying, doing, and teaching for 40 years. So they touch on, on everything. And then you can go deeper into different subjects and he recommends all sorts of great books. But it's the first book that I read every single year, and it originally came out in 2005. And then he did the 10th anniversary edition, which is the one that I recommend because he's expanded and added to it and more stuff for the digital age. But I read it every single year. 
My daughter reads it every single year. It is the first book that I recommend to people because like I said, it covers the basics of everything. I love that you said you read that book every year because there are books that I read every year that help keep me grounded. And so are there any other books that you read every year? Oh, there's, there's a few. I'm a really, really big fan of the Charles Duhigg books. So The Power of Habit and Smarter, Faster, Better. Um, like there, there's a few books that I call foundational books. The New Psycho-Cybernetics by uh, Maxwell Maltz is, a, is one. Um, I'm a big fan of the Robin Sharma books. I've read those many times. Um, it, I read a lot. Like I'm a major dork. I read every day. <laughs> I listen to audiobooks every day while I'm at the gym and I'm not like, it's not fiction. Like I said, I'm a dork. I read like the business books, the marketing books, the, I read tax books for fun. How sad is that? <laughs> <laughs> but you have to be, um, Malcolm Gladwell. Oh, has, I love him. I, I love him too. I really want to meet him. Uh, I'd love to sit down Seth, and talk Seth Godin him. is another good, another great one. Um, there, uh, Brene Brown is great. Like there's a, you're asking, I'm going, you want my reading list? It's like a mile long, dear. Just a few books because uh, readers do lead. And, you know, I have, I'm an avid reader as well. And I listen to a lot of books on tape. And I think that uh, we've got, we've gotten away from, we've gotten away from it, although it's become very popular and people are in, uh, people are in, book clubs and, and they're doing those types of things. Sometimes just the ability to be exposed to what somebody else is exposed to. Mm -hmm. And that's why I always ask, you know, what are you reading? You've mentioned some authors that I've never heard before. So I'll be on that. Uh, and, and I'll have those in our show notes for our listeners, but reading is very important. It's very empowering. In chiropractic yep. school, they say you're you are the same person except for who you meet, the books you read, and the places that you go. Yep, exactly. And so that's always good. And you, I'm you've been doing this for a while, so you have some words of wisdom. You've given us eight principles that we can check out to start a business. Words of wisdom. What do you have to say? You need to surround yourself with good people. That, that's one of, the, one of the biggest ones. You need to be very, very particular about who you allow into your mental and emotional state. One of the biggest things that I learned in my first two years in business is my circle of friends, my social circle, changed dramatically. The people that we socialize with and spent time with and all of that stuff when I was an employee and then who I socialized with and spent time with two years after I started my business, total and complete change. I'm still friends with the people when I was employees. A lot of them are still clients of mine, love them dearly, but we don't socialize because they're still employees and they're happy. there. all the power to them. I love them, support them but I can't talk to them about business. They look at me like I'm speaking Klingon. <laughs> so Here's moving into learn. business and, and meeting some great people through networking. And, and I was in a group coaching program for many, many years where I met amazing uh, business people that we could talk and share ideas and realize that other people have been through the fears and stuff that we're going through and support one another in ways that family can't, that your old friends that are all employee mindset, they can't. So the big thing is you have to surround yourself with good people that are in the same arena you're playing. Yes. Small business, that's, that's where it is. Um, next word of wisdom, you have to be learning every single day. Readers are leaders. You said that, oh, you're preaching to the choir. Um, whether or not you're actually physically picking up a book, because some people don't do so well with the reading, Correct. or you're listening to good audio books, or there's tons of great podcasts, like what you're listening to here now. Um, good networking groups, going and to coaching and different courses. You need to be learning formally in a way. 
And, and when I say formally, I don't mean like, okay, you have to go take courses at the university towards a degree or anything, but it has to be in your schedule that you're putting in 30 minutes a day to be building your skills. Because if you're not, you are losing, period, period. And I would also say, find yourself an awesome, basic beginner business coach. Because there's lots of great business coaches out there that have amazing programs, but they typically want you after you've made it past the two years. And they're very, very specialized. I call them the ologists. Right. And ologists are absolutely necessary and they're wonderful. But if you don't have a good family doctor that can help take care of you and help you diagnose going, okay, this is where your problem is. Let's send you to the right ologist. You will spend so much money, so much time, and you won't look after it. You need to have the basics first. You, be, you, you pour, pour your concrete foundation, and then you put up the walls, and then you put in the plumbing and the electrical stuff, and you build it up. You don't go in and start, I want to have the most beautiful living room <laughs> on the planet when you have no roof and the walls are leaking. That's right. That's right. Everybody wants to start off being a millionaire. Everybody can be a millionaire, according to Rachel Rogers, but everybody wants to start off being a millionaire. And that's well, everybody wants to start off being a millionaire. That's why I say I teach people the basic foundational skills to get them to first survive. Then we can talk about thriving, because if you can't, if you don't have the survival skills, you can learn the thriving skills, but they won't be worth anything. I love that you said, I love that you said this. You said business is business. There are so many times that I'm talking to people being in the community, patients that come in who are interested in being entrepreneurs. And I always tell them business is business. It doesn't matter if you're a doctor or it doesn't matter if you sell flowers. Yep. Business is business there is a formularic way that you have to approach it and you're right if you miss any of those steps or you don't develop them and 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 say you get this influx of business you have no systems in place and now you've you you've you've landed like a seed on rocky ground you sprout Mm -hmm. up real quick and then you die there there's been some businesses there there, there's one i can't remember what the business was called but it was probably about 15 years ago. And what they did is they, they were doing like vegan alternatives to burgers mm-hmm. and hot dogs and stuff like that. So they were, they were at the forefront and right. they had a great product and they thought, okay, what we need to do is everybody needs to know about us. We need to have this great marketing thing. So what they did is they bought an ad for the Super Bowl. They bought an ad for the Super Bowl. So they dropped And I think at the time it was like $3 million for a 30 second spot in the Super Bowl. And they put together, they they probably dropped another million dollars putting together this amazing commercial. And it went out on Super Bowl. What happened to the company, Lauren? They went in debt. Wasn't wasn't a debt issue. The the market They sprouted up too quickly. Their website crashed within half an hour of the commercial going out and they were out of business three months after because they their their marketing was very effective they got way more order they had no way of handling the influx so it they just imploded wow and a lot of people go well i just need better marketing well yes you probably do need better marketing but if that's the only thing that you're focusing on the marketing could actually kill you. There's a lot of people, well, we're going to expand. Like we're doing a great job and we're really popular. So we're going to open up more locations Mm -hmm. and they're not set up for it. So it destroys them. And then there's other people that they've got the great, they've got everything put together, but the idea of marketing terrifies them. And then another common one, are you looking after your financials? Do you know what your numbers are? Do you know the stories your numbers are telling you? Are you working with qualified, competent professionals that actually give a rat's ass about helping you succeed? Like there's all these different pieces and everybody has strengths and weaknesses. And when we're starting out in our business, areas that we had no freaking clue. And that's usually the stuff that bites us on the ass the hardest and you won't lose any weight in that process. 
That's good. So we're going to close out by really thanking you. I love your spirit. It's so strong um, and just so fiery. That's like right up my alley. <laughs> <laughs> And people say you attract who you are, right? I am very much that. Um, I love your advice to businesses. Uh, we do, we young, not just young businesses, but small businesses, they want to either make a lot of money or they need better marketing and, and they're taking pieces and bits of it and putting it out of proportion mm -hmm. and then finding themselves that they can't there's a lack of balance so I really want to thank you Tammy for joining me today on a well-lived life I I think being fired sometimes is a promotion it is and we're not taught that we're taught like you got fired how unsuccessful it must be you you must be doing something wrong but in reality sometimes for entrepreneurs it's the best thing that can happen to them so thank you well, for they your were doing something wrong they were putting their heart, their soul, and their energy into the wrong place. Yeah, to, to their, yeah, right, exactly. So I want to thank you. And this is very beautiful. I hope to invite you back on a, another segment where we can talk more about business. <laughs>